Welcome to HortTube, where we talk all things gardening. My name is Jim Putnam, and this is episode two in my plant, backyard plant propagation series. I had said in episode two we'd be installing the irrigation into the little hoop house we built last episode. But what I'm actually going to do is go through how I went about picking the components that I'm going to use for the irrigation system. A lot of you may not be familiar with the parts and pieces that you might need for this type of installation. And in episode three, we'll install them. But there's a lot of different considerations to go through when we're picking irrigation components for this type of mist system. So what we're trying to accomplish is that the leaves on our unrooted cuttings stay moist all the time. We're going to take cuttings off of plants that aren't going to have roots on them and we are going to have to basically replace what the roots were doing before with some sort of system that does not allow them to dry out. If they dry out at all for any prolonged period of time, they'll just die. So the irrigation heads we're going to be using will be these. I'll link them in the description below. We're going to either use two or four in this little house and we'll have water pipe that'll run up to these. Water comes up through them and then it hits this little top part and spreads out and drops a little mist onto the rooted cuttings. So I have this ligustrum here. I'll take a cutting off of it. Uh, this is about the type of cutting we'd be taking later in the spring. I'll take the bottom two leaves off of it and I'll leave this and I'll take the newest growth off of it. And what we'll be left with is something about like this, I might take one more leaf off of it, but obviously it has no roots. It has no ability to supply water to itself at all. So I'll show you just with this mist bottle, what we want is some sort of fog just to fall down onto that leaf occasionally. That's gonna dry out pretty quickly. So we're gonna have to do it pretty often. We don't have to have it on for very long to accomplish this okay, maybe three, four, five seconds, but it has to come on very frequently in order to keep that moist continuously. You'll see me using these little Corona, I like floral snips frequently in these videos. You can take hundreds of cuttings in a day with these. They're really, really super easy to use and they're inexpensive compared to some other pruners. If you use a big set of pruners and take, you know, 500 cuttings in a day, it can really, you can really get a lot of hand fatigue. So I use these, I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested in uh, getting a pair of these before we get started on the cuttings. The main reason I'm using this particular irrigation head is it puts the right size droplet that I like out on the plants. If you have a droplet that's too large, the water will actually just roll off the leaf and roll down into the soil to keep the soil wet, but it won't keep the leaf wet. If you go with something, a droplet that's too small, like a fog, and there are commercial propagation companies that use fogging systems, but they're able to shut down their greenhouses while the fog is applied. If you have any kind of ventilation in your greenhouse and the droplets are too small, like a fog, the ventilation like a fan can actually pull the fog out of the building or change the way it's coming down on the plant so that some get more and some get less. So this one puts out the appropriate size droplet. It coats the leaf well. Uh, but it has, uh, it's large enough that gravity works on it and it does lay down quick enough and the fans don't affect it very much. Okay, so like I've talked about, I'm either going to be installing two or four of these little mist heads. They'll be on little risers. But now we have to get water to them and we need some sort of electric valve for that. This is an electric irrigation valve. These are on every irrigation system that's underground in the world. Every golf course you go to, any place you see water, being applied to something from underground. They're using these little electric valves to control it. Very, very simple little thing. Water comes into one side, comes out the other. It's in a closed position unless a low voltage signal is telling it to turn on. It's a very simple little process. They can also be controlled by hand. There's little switches on the side of them that you can open and close typically to control them that way. But we'll be installing one of these and we'll have a clock turn turn it on and off and bring water into our house in the form of mist. Okay, so now for the complicated part. What type of clock are we gonna use to turn that valve on and off with? Here's the thing, almost all irrigation clocks are controlled by minutes, meaning you have to turn them on for at least one minute up to whatever amount of minutes you need them to run, maybe two hours. And then you can only turn them on once, maybe twice, maybe four times a day. 
what we need is a clock that will actually control, we can control in seconds. We need it to come on every, let's say eight minutes and we wanna run it for five seconds. And it's gonna depend on the season and the early summer versus the late summer. Temperatures are gonna change, conditions are gonna change. And we wanna be able to control that. We wanna put more time between when it runs or we might wanna put a little more time on each run and go from five seconds to seven seconds if it was really, really hot outside. And so most clocks don't allow us to do that. Here's an example of a hose end clock here. It only allows me to set it in minutes. It's perfect for what it is. You know, you would use this one on your hose um, bib and hook your hose to the bottom of it and you can have it come on when you go on vacation to water all your containers or whatever, but it's not really appropriate for what we're using it for. We have to get one that we can control in seconds. I'll link several in the description of this video that are available. Before I show you the clock I ended up choosing, I wanted to show you this product, which is called an electronic leaf. I've had this one for about 15 years. It's got a little mesh screen right here, if you can see that. And when your mist irrigation comes on, it actually applies a little bit of weight to this, which pushes it down and turns it off. As the water dries on this little mesh piece, it comes back up and completes the circuit and turns it back on. It actually wires to your valve. I still have this one wired on here. The other, there's two wires coming out of it. One is for your uh, electricity. The other one goes to your valve. And in the middle of that, it has a little switch inside here that turns it on and off with the weight of this. And it has a counterbalance on the back right here. This thing actually works quite well. It's a brilliant little product and requires not a lot of effort to use, but it is about $250, $275. I'll link one of these below. I've had this one, like I say, for about 15 years. They've gone up quite a bit since then. The reason that I actually stopped using it is it only controls one zone. And in the big propagation house that I have, I have divided it into eight zones. I don't have enough pressure to run that entire house. It's probably 150 irrigation heads in there and I don't have that kind of water pressure to run it. So I would have needed eight of these to run that house. So I kind of retired it, but it does work great. It would work really great in this little hoop house here. The one thing you want to keep an eye on with these electronic leaves is it eventually develops some algae on here and the weight of that algae can start to change the weight of this leaf. So sometimes you have to adjust the counterbalance or take it out for a little while and clean off this leaf occasionally. Okay, I showed you this hose in timer that doesn't work on seconds. There actually are a couple that do work on seconds and I'll link those below. I found on the internet that had pretty good reviews. Uh, that's a lot of you are probably gonna end up doing that type of system where you just use your water spigot in your yard and run your irrigation to your greenhouse that way. I have some underground irrigation here. I'm gonna tap into that and I'll, and I'll show you how I do that when I come around to it. But you can just put one of these on, screw it to your hose bib, put your hose on it and hook it up that way. And like I say, you just have to get a clock that will run on seconds that will do that. The clock I ended up getting, I got on Amazon. It's a Galcon. It will control eight zones. And down here at the bottom, this little cover comes off and we can wire eight zones in here. I figured if I was going to uh, shoot these video series in the future, I might want to put up multiple houses, at which point I would want to have multiple zones. So that's the reason I picked this clock. The other reason you might want to end up with multiple zones is if you don't have enough water pressure to run. You know, I'm only going to put two, maybe four heads in here. If you build this house much bigger than this and end up with eight or 10 irrigation heads, that is going to be an issue. One issue with this Galcon clock is it's not waterproof. It was meant to be installed in a garage. So I'm going to have to buy some waterproof box for it to go in. I'll get that before I install them next week. So on next episode, I'll be tapping into the irrigation line, installing this electric valve, running the PVC over to this house and putting in these drip irrigation heads. So if this video was helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Also comment below with any questions you have about plant propagation. Thanks again.